Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And I want to read aloud an email I've just received from a Dan Real person who says, Dear Pete, three months ago, as a result of a lapse of judgment, which I now bitterly regret, I unsubscribed from your channel. Now I have come to my senses, resubscribed, and I want to send you the sum I calculate you have lost from monetization due to my grotesque disloyalty via PayPal or remitly, which is £1.17. Dan, I want to thank you for that and also for your fiercely self-questioning humility and honesty. It's actually about £1.30. Nicolas Cage has perhaps never been Nicolas Cagier in what could be his Nicolas Cagiest performance ever. Dream Scenario is a surreal fantasy satire about the unsafe space of social media and the nature of viral fame, something to be aspired to or dreamt of by everyone. The democratised and accessible stardom which can happen to us all, despite or in some way because of our lack of achievement. This kind of fame can be alchemised from ordinariness, a fame produced and consumed on smartphones and capable of getting inside people's heads because they can imagine, in fact want to imagine, the same thing happening to them. Cage is Professor Paul Matthews, with a decent but unexciting career lecturing on biology and how animals evolved to avoid the mortal danger in standing out from the herd. Cage shows us a dull guy, balding with glasses, habitually wearing an anorak with a furry collar. Privately, he is eaten up with rage at his lack of publications and his career stagnation. Meanwhile, a former colleague has become a huge success with ideas very similar to his, and a college contemporary is a fashionable media academic hosting smart dinner parties to which Paul and his wife Janet, played by Julianne Nicholson, are never invited. Why does the zebra look the way it does? <laughs> so embarrassing. Hey, focus. Is this how it went? No, it's different now. Oh, you've been on my mind recently. Yeah? Because you keep popping up in my dreams. You don't do anything, you're just there. So, this specific person, the remarkable nobody, I don't still have that experience. Do you have a picture? Have you been dreaming about me? It is Professor Matthews' terrible destiny to become a cross between Freddy Krueger from A Nightmare on Elm Street and Leonard Zelig, the chameleon non-entity in the Woody Allen comedy who insinuates himself into every historical situation of the 20th century. There's also a hint of the unhappy male lecturers from Philip Roth's The Human Stain and J.M. Kurtzier's Disgrace. Matthew's problems begin when friends, acquaintances and total strangers start doing double takes at him, their mouths parted in incredulous half-smiles. His students start paying rapt attention. Through some supernatural psychopathological epidemic, boring old Professor Matthews has started appearing in everyone's dreams, but always, to his chagrin, as a hilariously unimportant character in the background of some dramatic or violent dream scenario. The NPC in life's video game has become the ironic cameo star. Matthews experiences actual stardom when news of this phenomenon gets out, but that can't explain his continuing nationwide dream celebrity. Yet, as if in some moral parable, Matthews' charmingly non-threatening persona in these dreams changes when he attempts to monetize the career potential and sexual possibilities. The writer-director here is the Norwegian filmmaker Christopher Borgli, with a long interest in satirising celebrity narcissism and celebrity hunger, but whose previous film, Sick of Myself, I found really heavy-handed. Yet Dream Scenario is a smart film about the uncanny nature of fame, its self-consciousness and self-alienation, creating a sensation of being wary of and secretly astonished by your own famous persona, similar to the weirded-out feeling any of us can have in running into someone we'd been dreaming about the night before. Dream Scenario is a cousin to Spike Jonze's Being John Malkovich and Richard Linklater's Waking Life, and very enjoyable, at once strangely light-hearted and yet heavy with menace. That's it. Please give this vlog a like and a share. Please subscribe. That's all important. And leave an uncritical comment. And please buy my book, The Films That Made Me, an edited selection of my essays and reviews from The Guardian. See you next time.